Want to get better at World of Tanks? I'm your Watt Coach, 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. Welcome back to Coach's Corner. Today, Max and I are reviewing a replay from our friend and viewer, Known of Consequence. And we are on the map Minsk in the LT-432. All right, let's take a look at the vehicle lineup. We have a handful of heavies, a handful of mediums, a couple of tank destroyers, a lot of light tanks, and only one artillery piece. So let's take a look at the minimap and uh, talk about what we can expect. Okay, from the enemy team, I would expect a lot of their mediums to come up here and play in this area, possibly taking this safer route up through here. I would expect maybe one or two to kind of peel off and come up into this area, possibly a light tank. I expect the wheel tank to be doing circles out here and their heavy tanks will be playing somewhere in this area here with artillery possibly hiding in one of these outcroppings in these areas here. So me and my light tank, where I would go, there's a few options. You could always head over here with the mediums and try and help the mediums by playing as a medium. But I think to start with the match, one of the best things you can do is just try and get early vision, even though you have a lot of friendly light tanks. Working this area can provide you a decent amount of vision here. If you can spot some of these crossing tanks, it's unlikely, but it, mm, you might get some assisted damage, uh, at least from artillery back here. And then I would expect our heavies to come down here and play this area. And I would kind of probably sit in the, in the middle until one of the two sides either holds and pushes through or breaks and falls back. Once one of those two things happens on either side is when I would move to either that side to shore it up or push through one of those two things. All right, let's get into the match. Just a reminder, guys, I do stream on Twitch live every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. So if you'd like to hear kind of my coach's corner commentary, except in a live format, I recommend popping over there and uh, checking it out. If you're interested in having your replay reviewed in the description will be a link to my discord channel. From there, there will be a chat channel called Coach's Corner, and that's where we discuss and submit replays for review. All right, I see no one of consequences headed towards the middle ridge, looking to get some extended view range out here. Ahead of your links too, you'll get a few more initial spots that he won't get. That was some good initial spotting, although you might be exposing yourself the further up you go. So real quick, I just want to point out a little bit of the terrain here so that you can kind of get an idea of what I'm going to be talking about in a second. So you have the edge of the highway that comes down through here and then you have this lowered part of the road and down here it's very steep and over here it's very flat. So you have this area that flattens out as you come up here. So the further north or the further to this side that you drive the more likely you expose yourself to fire coming from this direction. So we already have an active scout and driving further this way gets you more exposed. Instead of doing loops in a vehicle like this, a better thing to do would be, let me zoom my cursor on over here, is you wanna be kind of in the middle. So maybe in this area here where you initially broke the fence, and what you want to do is just put the front of your vehicle just up far enough so that the center of the hull or the center of where the gun meets the turret pokes just far enough over to spot all this stuff and then you roll back down. That gives you the most amount of view range with the least amount of exposure and it's safer than driving around in circles, especially in an area where the terrain levels out and you become exposed to fire over here when you do these loops. Let the let the wheel tank do the loops. He's a little faster. Um, you do have a thin profile, so you might be okay doing it, but that's where I would be uh, more or less poking up and hiding, poking up and hiding, as opposed to doing loops. Oh, 
That's not too bad either, just riding up the ridge and then going back down. You don't want to be too far to the north. I see there's a Burrask you might have shots on. Yeah, he's right there. You can blind fire that all day long. I see you're using the uh, <laughs> one of the settings that I've talked about in my settings video. I'll link it to the little postcard here. There'll also be a link in the description, which is the dynamic camera. Um, I know we've talked about it before and that it doesn't bother you. By all means, definitely use it if you find it more interesting and fun to play with. For me, it's one of those settings that can throw off my aim. So if you guys are interested in seeing all of the settings I run and why I run them, uh, head over to that video. Oh wow, their mediums are playing really aggressive. Yeah, I would definitely just kind of chill where you are right now and just keep getting damage. Because you're in uh, good camo cover here. Yeah, just keep taking shots. Absolutely. It's good farm. Oh, try and try and retrack him if you can. Never mind. You got annihilate. I think you just got proxied by the links. Yeah, you did. So you want to stay low if you can. Don't go too far up. There you go. So it looks like they are pushing through onto your mediums. So one of the options that you can do, since they're playing so aggressively, is you can pop through this little opening here and try and help your your heavy and your mediums here finish these guys off because four guns against two, possibly three tanks means these guys die really quickly and more of your team has their hit points left after the engagement. All right, we got an SU in the middle. Oh yeah, don't, don't get spotted, hide. <laughs> hide behind your Centurion. That's a scary vehicle if he's got the uh, big gun. And he does. That's 700 alpha from your scent. That's rough. You should be you should be dark and safe enough to take shots now. You gotta aim a little lower. So it could be that he's hiding behind this ridge line. I know there's a little bit of a ridge that's running through here. I would maybe take blind fire shots because these fence posts can actually block the little outline that you get when you hover your cursor over the vehicle. So I'd maybe take a few test shots and then maybe move a little bit closer. Um, when you are in this area, what I would do is try and move away from the tracks, but stay within this uh, camo cover here. Because as you move away from the tracks, you're less likely to be proxy spotted from the vehicles that are surfing this ridge line, which will allow you to stay dark in this woods, which will allow you to get unreturnable damage on the SU-152. I feel like you should be able to have a shot there. I would maybe shoot and see if there's any... Yeah, you definitely should have a shot there. Um, I would have fired to see if there was any destructible cover that I was shooting through, but yeah. It is what it is. And your team already cleaned up those mediums, so... The 12T has run away. The T-34-3 is now getting hammered by the Emil. And your heavies and your EBR have moved in. Okay, so this is a really interesting scenario. Your team has actually won both sides of the map. Or at least they're trying to. Your 53 TP has already pushed up. It looks like your Tiger 2 is already moving into the middle here, as is the IS-3 will probably take that point pretty soon. Your E4 is either looking through this door with your Emil looking this way. You still have quite a few vehicles over here and you still have a Scorpion G in the back. So what I would do is I would pile my gun into the area that's winning. And to my eye, I would think that this side is probably gonna go down faster because there's only three tanks here. There's a there's quite a few here, especially with an auto loader uh, down two auto loaders in this area. So what I would do is I'd probably jump up on this bridge, zip on over here, and engage whatever vehicle my 53 TP is distracting. Once the T32 goes down, the 53 TP is gonna move towards the VK and just shoot him when he's not looking. It's as simple as that. And that would be a force multiplier on that flank. So your EBR is doing the same thing that I just talked about. Oh, there's still plenty of targets in this. Oh, oh man, there's the Scorp. Hide. That's a big gun. I would load HE and go after that Scorp. Oh, he, he just fired. I would definitely just load the HE and go after him. For sure. You got plenty of time. Track him. He's got a long reload. Oh, you definitely can kill him now. Aim. Uh, he had plenty of time to just aim the shot. Well, he's down now, so it is what it is. 
Luckily, you bounced a shot from the IS-2 in the back. Now the IS-2 is going to get collapsed on. So I would ignore the IS-2. There's not that many hit points left, and you want to try and get as much damage as you can. Yeah, I would ignore the IS-2, run around this way, go after the LT, the T-69, the T-34-3, and just try and clean up as much damage as I can before the game's over. Happily accepting any damage in return, because at this point, it's worth exchanging hit points to just get a little bit more damage. Yeah, I'd probably just go ramming speed down in there. Oh man, those mediums got cleaned up quick. I'd probably be running towards the IS-2 now. Yep, might as well just drive straight to the IS-2. You might be quick enough to get a couple shots in. I think it's worth trying. Oh boy, we're gonna drown maybe. Oh! That's uh, that's one type of driving. I think you missed. I think you missed your shot there. So I would say, even though it, it's probably unlikely that it would have been, it would have worked. If you had gone to this ridge up here or possibly gotten on top of this hill, I don't know if you can, but if you had gotten up high enough to have an angle over here, you probably could have nailed at least maybe one, maybe two more shots of damage because it's taking them a while to plow through that IS-2's armor there. I mean, he's still alive. Still, I mean, you tried to fly. It turns out the LT-432 doesn't have wings. <laughs> oh, well, this was a good match. Thanks for submitting this, no one of consequence. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that replay review, and we'll see you on the next Coach's Corner. Take it easy.